Okay, welcome. We are going to add to our notes on electrostatics or static electricity and try to explain the phenomenon behind the three labs that you're exploring. First thing you need to do is understand which materials are insulators and which materials are conductors. And the simplest definition is that any material that allows electrons to move freely is a conductor. Any material that does not allow electrons to move freely is an insulator. So we like to think of as insulators that they can hold the electrons. They don't let the uh, they don't let them move and roam freely. They're kind of fixed and stuck. Uh, rubber, like in your rubber balloon, glass, air, um, are all good examples of insulators. Uh, Conductors, though, you can think of it as they conduct electricity. When you conduct electricity, you're letting the electrons move. And just as a reminder, when we talk about charge and the movement of charge, it's the electrons that do the moving. Protons are the big, massive, heavy centers, nuclei, that don't move. It's the electrons on the outer shells, the valence electrons, the ones that are most free to move. They're the reasons why certain objects become ionized and charged. So if uh, you add electrons to a rubber balloon, the, the, the electrons can stay fixed in that one area. If you add electrons to a conductor, they'll kind of spread around and evenly distribute. So for example, you might see some diagrams. You know, if you rub your balloon on your hair, maybe some electrons transfer over to the balloon, and maybe I will we'll draw them all in one spot. Now, we know, uh, Negatively, negative charges repel negative charges, but if they're on a, a rubber balloon, then they don't have the ability to move away from each other. However, if you put them on, you know, a metal sphere, something made out of aluminum, copper, iron, whatever it is, all metals are conductors that conduct electrons. Then those electrons, when you add them, they'll start to spread out and they'll evenly distribute themselves because they're repelling. They try to spread out and they try to uh, move to an area where they can find positive charges. You remember, by nature, everything wants to be neutral. So you can explain the behavior of the charge based on the material it's in, whether that material allows the electrons to move freely or whether it uh, I'm sorry, whether it does allow them to move freely in conductors or it does not in insulators. All right, now, I just talked about even distribution of charge. I just want to draw some diagrams. Obviously, we're talking about billions of electrons and protons. I'm not going to draw them. But let's just uh, make a diagram of a couple cases. All right. If charge has an even distribution up here, that means um, for every electron, there's a proton, vice versa. And, you know, they opposites attract like repels. And so you can see the positive and negatives evenly distributed. I have four positives, four negatives, so it's neutral, which means the net charge is zero. Uh, this happens naturally. Objects are naturally neutral, meaning they have a net charge of zero and their charge is evenly distributed. But sometimes um, charge is polarized, which means separated. So when you think of polarized, uh, that, that term is used, you know, politics is polarized, red and blue, Republican, Democrats. The Earth is polarized, North Pole and South Pole, like magnets are polarized, North, North Pole and South Pole. Batteries are pol polarized. There's a positive end and a negative end. Charge is polarized. It's to separate into opposites. And so if, if somehow charge, the positives were pushed to the left and the negatives were pushed to the right, that's not natural because like charges want to repel. They don't want to be together. But it can be forced to happen. So if you look at this image, there's still four pluses and four minuses. So it's neutral. The net charge is zero. However, the left side has a positive charge, a net positive and the right, chart, right side has a net negative charge. It's kind of how a battery works. And that's what happened in some of your labs. You just didn't know it. The, the charge was polarized and separated. So one end, if you brought a balloon near it, perhaps you saw a positive attracting a negative and vice versa. And this can occur when you force charge to move within the material. 
This would have to be a conducting material where the electrons could shift freely. They could separate to one side. And that will always happen if you bring a charged object near it. So if I brought a negatively charged object to the right, the negatives would move to the move all the way away. They'd repel away and you would polarize it. If you brought, and vice versa, if you brought a positively charged object over here uh, to this side, the negatives would be drawn over, attracted to that. You can induce this polarization of charge without ever touching the object. Okay, so let's now review the labs. Um, all right. First lab, the magic can lab. Let's say the first thing you did was you took a, a balloon that was neutral and your, your body was neutral and the can is neutral. Just, you just assume everything's neutral. Uh, but the first thing you did was you rubbed the balloon against the hair. So you, there was some friction here, right? There was some contact, some rubbing, some friction. And whenever that happens, charge can transfer. Now, how do you know which way it goes? How do you know if electrons went from the hair to the balloon or from the balloon to the hair? It's the electrons that do the moving. Well, it's hard to know. You can't see it. But I can tell you that a rubber balloon holds its charge, so it doesn't easily give it up. Your hair does not. And so it just depends on the material. So the electrons will leave the hair, leaving your hair positive. Extra electrons go to the balloon, so you have a, your balloon is a net negative charge. Your hair is a net positive. And that's why your hair might start sticking up because each strand of hair is repelling each other strand of hair because, you know, like charges repel and they start to spread up, spread out. And if you bring the balloon near the pop can, or some of you had soup cans, it doesn't matter, a metal can, it's metal, so it allows the charge to move freely. The negatives in the balloon, as you get, get it, uh, uh, bring it near the can, getting closer and closer and closer, as this distance gets smaller and smaller, the electrons in the can can sense the electrons in the balloon. They can sense the field. There's an electric field force, and they repel away, leaving the near side of the can positive, the far side of the can negative, so the can becomes polarized. Right? It's not charged, it's actually, it's actually neutral, but it's polarized, so the, the, the top side of the can is positively charged, and therefore you have opposites from the balloon and the top side of the can. Those two surfaces have opposite charges, and therefore there's an electric attractive force because opposites attract and the balloon can be used to pull and drag the can, and as it's rolling, the charge keeps moving around. So the positives stay closest to the balloon and the negative state furthest from the balloon. Um, so again, this works because the balloon's an insulator, the can's a conductor, and it allows for that charge to distribute and polarize in that fashion. Finally is the, uh, the water stream you did. Um, this is a little tricky to see, but let me just line this up first. When the water falls out of your faucet, it's neutral. Everything is neutral naturally. Just assume that. And let's assume the balloon, it's the same balloon that you charged on your hair from the previous example. So it gained a net negative charge. So I put my negatives here. They're not free to roam and evenly distribute. They're kind of stuck on one side because it's a rubber insulating surface. But what starts to happen is when the water falls, it can sense this net negative charge in the balloon when you bring it near. And what, 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 is the, what happens in the water? Well, this water, um, can allow, it's a conducting material, and it, the electrons will move away as far as they can, so the water will naturally polarize. And you see that here, the left side is positive, the right side is negative. Therefore, the, as this distance gets smaller and smaller between the negative charge of the balloon and the near side of the water stream, which is positive, those are opposites, and opposites attract, so the water stream bends towards the balloon, it deflects towards the balloon. Some of you had some wonderful examples. However, most of you said, just like in the pop can, that according to Newton's second law, as you increase mass, you decrease the acceleration, and therefore the force is not strong enough. This has too much mass in a heavy stream. It's too heavy to move. You would need much more electric force to, to, to force it to move. Similar with the can. Most of you made the argument that if this can is full of liquids, it's very heavy. And this electric force that's pushing it may not be great enough to cause it to roll. Excellent job on that. Um, make sure you're taking notes. 
on these two prime examples, the difference between what we refer to as the even distribution of charge, which occurs naturally, versus the polarization of charge, which is forced to happen in conducting materials that can be forced to polarize if a charged object is brought near. But recall, both cases, the net, the total net charge is still zero. And we are going to continue to review different types of materials um, that are classified as either insulator or conductor.